Feels a little like the good old days here. Midnight. Midnight. Just when the juices start flowing. Midnight. Yeah. Here at the Voice of College Football. I'm talking to no one right now. Uh, I failed to send out a notification for this. My bad. I went on the community page earlier today, so I made the notification there, but I didn't set this live stream up in StreamYard. I thought I had, but I did not. So my bad. Now we've got seven on the line. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. Late night. This is the way we used to do it on a regular basis. Back in the day, if back in the day was six months ago, we'll call six months ago, back in the day, back in the day, we used to do it like this all the time. I used to be amazed at uh, all of you because you were just phenomenal at uh, just jumping online at the last second. I would not have a scheduled live stream and I would jump on maybe when I got home from work at uh, 3.30 in the morning. It would be 3.30 in the morning. I would jump on to do a live stream just because I felt like talking to all of you. And lo and behold, I'd have 75, 80 people on the line like that. And, and, and I just marveled at everybody's flexibility to uh, respond to my schedule and my whims of wanting to talk college football with all of you. So welcome in tonight. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a normal thing. We still have to really work out a live stream schedule. And this is a part of what I would like to talk to everybody about. Keep in mind that you're always able to talk college football with me and call in at 860-499-3332. But uh, please don't do that right this second because I would like to talk about the channel with all of you millions who will be watching. 10 right now, but I think that will... Uh, be added to by about five or six zeros by the time this posts and the millions watch. So for those of you watching right now and in the live chat, I will get to you in just a second, but thank you so much for joining. I'm trying to get as many people on here as possible, although I'm sure people will be asking me questions weeks from now. So here we go. So this is the voice of college football. Why is it the voice of college football? Two part meaning. Two-part meaning. Many of you out there, thank you for giving me this name, the voice of college football, because it came from you. Every so often, if somebody gets a little offended and writes me, maybe doesn't necessarily think my channel's that great or that I know what I'm talking about and they take a shot at the voice of college football, that's fine. I get it. Guy calls himself the voice of college football and he's a knucklehead. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Fine. But uh, that, uh, that uh, title came from all of you. So I had a number of people call me the voice of college football before I ever came up with it. Also, it's got a double meaning, double meaning here, because it also is a reflection on all of you. Because our aim, our goal, and our mission, of course, best discussion, debate, and analysis, that's what we aim for but to include all of you, to give a voice to everybody who wants a voice. That's why I do my best to read as many of the comments in the live chat, to take as many calls as possible, to do as many live shows and live streams as anybody out there, and uh, to give all of you a voice. Plus, on top of that, how many people do I bring on here? I counted a couple of years ago, this might've been like in 2019 would be my guess. I counted how many guests I had on in one year. How many guests I had on in one calendar year here? Take a guess. Leave your number in the comments section. I will get to all the guesses before I reveal how many guest contributors, college football analysts, writers, broadcasters that I had on in one calendar year. So I've got a voice. You've got a voice. Everybody that we bring on here has a voice. You've got your opinion. You've got your take. You've got your team. You've got your passion. That's what makes it go. But the aim is best discussion, debate, and analysis, of course. That's what we aim to do. Let's see who's online before we talk channel changes. It's good to see uh, from the top, Kyle, 
first. Reminds me of a line I used to have back in my WCBI CBS station Mississippi days where I used to do the first look at sports. I've told that story once or twice. We also have Penn State Fan 24 on the line. What is up with you? I'm doing great. I seem to have a little more juice, a little more energy this time of night. I've been trying to change my internal clock and my schedule since I quit ESPN in October. So I've been setting my alarm for eight in the morning, eight in the morning, forcing myself to work and be among the living during the day. I believe that there's actually a reason why God brought the sun up at a certain time and then set it at a certain time. Doctors will tell you that you should be sleeping when it's dark out. But man, it's been difficult for me to change my lifestyle. All right, D4 Sports, good to see you. David, this is madness. You are supposed to be counting sheep at midnight. Come on, David. If I'm not on here, I am certainly not counting sheep. You know what I'm typically doing? I am working this business. You know that, David. I am working this business. And I got to work it a hell of a whole lot better. It's what I need to do. I need to do. I need to step up my game big time. But David, thank you so much for that. You know that you are hmm, you are an integral part of what we do. You have provided all sorts of support. And thank you for that. David Greenshield's on the line. Good to see you, David. Kyle, just when the tuna starts to bite. Okay. What are we tearing up? We're going to tear up the channel, Mike. Got to tear up this channel. Got to tear up this channel. I'll tell you how in just a second. You know, Penn State Live, uh, Penn State, I was going to call you Penn State Live. I got live on the brain. We're going live all the time. Penn State Fan 24. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, the late night live streams. <laughs> Again, I'm trying to change my body clock. Trying to go to bed by at I said at one point when I started this that I would try to go to bed at 1 a.m. and I'm not coming anywhere close to that. So let's let's be a little bit more realistic about going to bed at 2 and getting up at 8. I'm setting my alarm for 8. I've got a morning routine I'm trying to hit, trying to get out of the shower by 9, trying to get up, spend some time um, in meditation, some time in prayer, some time listening to some... some um, some 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 biblical and some spiritual uh, teaching and so forth, and then also I typically get a phone call, uh, and uh, then I wake myself up and jump in the shower, and I want to be ready and working, then get that uh, get that breakfast going, and and so that's been my aim, and I did pretty well this morning. I was out of that shower about nine o'clock or so. Yes, anytime is a good time to talk college football. The off season, though, man, it's just so long. It seems like it's been forever since we saw Ohio State get annihilated by Alabama, and it's going to be forever before we see whoever we see on the opening Thursday night, which I believe, of course, Ohio State, Minnesota, and some other games. But the previous Saturday had been scheduled Illinois and Nebraska, but I think that that has been changed I might be wrong on that. There was something changed about the Nebraska schedule, and I should know what that is because we did a Nebraska live stream and we reported it, but I don't remember what the change was. It had something to do with the FCS team that they're playing in November. They switched some things around because they had originally scheduled to play August 28th, a Saturday, against Illinois overseas in Ireland. So maybe we still have some August 28th games. So that is just about three months away. We're just about three months and a few days away. Three months and a week. H-Man, good to see you. Kyle, it's amazing how the satellite internet tunes on your show. First, when you can train your technology, Kyle, to do the right thing, to know the right thing, 
to just be able to know those preferences, it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. It reminds me of the time when I bought my first car. So this is admittedly much earlier than I would like to admit it to be because you're going to add up some ages and uh, figure out how old I am. I hate when that happens. But uh, this would have been in the fall of 1986 when I bought my first car. It was a 1977 Silver Cutlass Supreme. Yeah, four-door Cutlass Supreme. Enormous. 455 engine. And uh, when I finally purchased it, when I finally purchased it, which my, my, my dad gave me a tip uh, when I went to sign the final papers, the very final papers, everything was all set. All the numbers were on the sheet. He told me, hey, you're just a kid. You can claim ignorance here. You tell them you're paying for it. You didn't know anything about the sales tax. You you just didn't think of sales tax. You didn't know that there would be sales tax. So when they put that sales tax, say, I don't have enough money for the sales tax. They wrote off the sales tax. They wrote off the sales tax. My old man knew something. He was quite the wheeler and dealer. Uh, yeah, Phil, I like the late night shows as well. I'm trying to change my lifestyle, but still the late night shows. The reason I switched to all these six o'clock live streams is because YouTube told me to, and it really hasn't paid off because we used to get a big crowd in here, a big crowd for the humble voice of college football channel. You know, we're not talking about when you turn on some of these political shows, if you come across there's, there's one political show, I don't watch it, but I, I like it. If you follow me, I like it when I had watched it in bits and pieces, but I just don't have time and I, I'm trying to tune out to political stuff, but, um, it, it's a great show, but, uh, I can't think of the guy's name. I think his name's Tim, but I don't know the name of his show, but I would flip that thing on and, uh, their, their live chat is streaming by like it's on a crazy Rolodex, uh, zooped up a thousand times over. And uh, they've got super chats like blinking, like, you know, you just see red and green and yellow, just doo -doo 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 -doo. And there's like 21,000 people on the line. So, so I'm not talking about that, but we used to get definitely get much better numbers, even in the off season during the season, I get it. But even in the off season, we would get better numbers going live late, late, late night. It must be you guys. My number one demographic is 25 to 34 male, then it's uh, 34 to 45 male. David has spun that uh, quite quite the spin on the line there, quite the uh, spin on the phrase there. Mark is the man that gives college football his voice. This has become David's opening line. This has become David's opening line for his phone calls. So, so that's become as famous as the voice of college football in and of itself. Okay. Here we've got some guesses on. I asked to guess how many guests I had on. This would have been 2018 or 19, but it's probably about the same every year because I actually went back and thought, man, I had so many guests on this year. How many guests did I have on? I went through and guessed. There's a lot of guests in there. Uh, I guessed the number of guests. Okay, we got Penn State fan 24 at 61. Mike's coming in with 32. Come on, Mike. You know better than that. Elena, thank you so much for your support. We appreciate it. I can always use the kind words. Thank you so much for that. Uh, for those people who heard this uh, brief story, I apologize because you've already heard it, but this reminds me when you say, love your channel, keep it going, that I was in Houston a couple of weeks ago last weekend. Yes, because many of you saw the horrific uh, plane ordeal coming back, but I was in Houston and I go to a Chili's. I'm sitting there, sit down at the Chili's and the waiter comes up. And as soon as I lift my head, it didn't take him like three trips to the back and forth to the table to then think like, who is this guy? It was funny because as soon as I lifted my head, he's like, oh, he didn't call me the voice of college football though. He did. He did say, you're the guy that makes the college football videos. 
I said, yeah. And then when I was walking out later, he, he ran up to me and said, uh, keep up the great work. Uh, keep those videos coming. So hopefully the Oklahoma fan in Houston, the waiter at Chili's is watching and will know now where to go for his, all of his Oklahoma content. Once I explain Kyle, the voice of college football is the iron dome. <laughs> Uh, Lane is going with 59 guests for the entire year. No, 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 Mike, not every caller. Talking about guests, talking about guests like Steve Dace, Michigan Podcast, Steve Hellwagon, Buck Nuts, the, the guests that I have on to talk college football that I actually have on. Hey, Gage, how you doing? It's good to see you. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate that. Kyle is requesting to put Florida State above Florida and Miami. Okay, why don't we do this for you, Kyle? So basically, if I, I am, I got to admit that I am a bit surprised. I got to keep my monitor awake over here. I'm a bit surprised that nobody mentions over here because much of the time over the past couple of weeks, I have taken all helmets down from the top shelf to display my sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped quality product. I enjoy it. It's great. It's clean. It's smooth. Tremendous product. Go to manscaped.com. Your code is uh, Mark1. Mark1, M-A-R-K, 1. You get 20% off. 20% off using Mark1. But uh, for Kyle, since Kyle spoke up, Regardless of how many Gator and Canes fans are on tonight watching, we're displaying Florida State and their fine three and six record at the top of the heap. Lost track here. Mike 3883, liking the energy. I've got more energy at night. Uh, unfortunately, many of these videos you guys see. Uh, especially when I had the job, I would uh, schedule a live or not a live stream. I would schedule a record for 10 o'clock in the morning because either I just wanted to get in as many as I could, or that particular person, that guest could, could only make it, let's say at 10 in the morning. And I was up until five in the morning and I'd get three and a half hours of sleep. I'd roll out of bed 10 to 10 minutes to 10 and boom. And uh, it shows. It, it many times shows. So uh, there, Phil's, Phil's right there with Kyle on the Florida State move. What do we have here from Samuel? Got Samuel on the line. Samuel, I got to say, and I apologize if you've been here and I just have yet to acknowledge you, but uh, this is the first time I've seen your name in any of the comments. So you know what this means? Samuel. Samuel Buddha. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. It's great to have you, Samuel. Would love to know who you root for and how long you've been watching. Because many times I find out that people have been watching for a few years. They just um, they just kick back and watch. That's great. But we, we love to hear from you. Samuel says, my dad used to tell me the football is a funny shape, takes a lot of funny bounces. Can you predict a funny bounce the upcoming season? Nice, nice little segue there, Samuel. Set up the question with uh, something that uh, we all know about the football. It does not bounce like a baseball or a basketball. Basketball in particular takes funny bounces and is made for a lot of funny Bloopers, a lot of NFL films have been built around the bouncing of the football. Funny bounce this season. Let me come up with a good one. Our funny bounce of the season. <laughs> Our funny bounce of the season. 
Our funny bounce of the season comes courtesy. I got to come up with something good, something good, something good. Funny bounce of the season. Could it possibly be those Iowa Hawkeyes win the Big Ten Championship in Indianapolis in December? Could that be the funny bounce of the season? When Iowa just gets better and better and better and better throughout the season. And that Spencer Petras just is good enough along with that Iowa football team to pull off a stunner in Indianapolis in December and win the Big Ten Championship. Would that be the funny bounce? Could that be the funny bounce? Matthew, good to see you. And I am going to answer the question about how many guests we had that particular year. Kyle, 30 minutes of sleep every four hours. Really? Week one is pretty great this year. Clemson, Georgia, we'll go through week one. We typically do that at some point in the summer. We'll go through and say, okay, we're talking week one. We'll carve it up. There you go, Matthew. I believe they did as well because of uh, the, the trip being taken away that they moved up. Uh, what what I believe they did is that they, and then they did something with the bye week because they were going to have a bye week that week. So now they're just playing when everybody else is playing. But I hope somebody's playing week zero. We do have some week zero games. I'm always counting on Colorado State and Oregon State or San Jose State's playing Hawaii in week zero. I know it was Arizona and Hawaii a couple years ago. That's when I get to see some teams that I will not watch the rest of the year. I'm not going to see Colorado State play the rest of the year, but I remember them playing Oregon State in a week zero game a couple years ago, and I was glued. I was glued to that 53-38 game. Michael, what is going on tonight, everybody, and how are you doing? I am doing great. Michael with a personal message for David. David doing great as well, I hope. Matthew, Nebraska basically only has one home game that first month hurts recruiting. Matthew, we will let you know uh, as a precursor to what I will be talking about in just a second as we update the channel, but I'm going through so many comments that uh, maybe we won't get to it, and I've got a super chat coming in. I will get to that in just a second. Thank you so much for that. Is that uh, our Nebraska Live show every Tuesday night, every Tuesday night, Nebraska Live will be on the Nebraska channel. We were on the Nebraska channel last week. So we will now be on the Nebraska channel each and every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And if you do anything for me this week and do it tonight before you forget, subscribe to the Nebraska channel. So here's the deal. Get to 1,000 subs. We're good to go. That's a key number on YouTube. Get to 1,000 subs. We're at uh, around 830. We need about 170 subs on the Nebraska channel. Get us to 1,000. And then you know what? If you don't want to be subbed, wait till we get 100, 100, 200 over, and then you can unsubscribe. Nebraska plays Fordham week one. Nebraska plays Fordham. Fordham, huh? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, I got you. I got you, Samuel. So they dropped the midseason game, the game against Southeastern Louisiana. They picked up Fordham. They moved the bye week so that it makes sense. They did have two buys, but the first buy was just a buy after the first game. They, they erased the first buy that was week one, and now they've got a week 10 or 11 by before the stretch drive against uh, Iowa and Wisconsin, I believe. Kyle, Tim Pool, I believe that's the young man's name. I believe that's the young man's name that wears the beanie. Yeah.
George Maddock Go Knowles. I think George might be a name from way, way back. I don't believe that I've seen your name for a long time, or maybe I'm mixing you up with somebody else. But hey, hello from Tokyo. Well, how about that? I had a conversation with my mom the other day. Uh, my mom is a beautiful 91 years old. Some people have commented, um, not necessarily here, but posting pictures on Facebook. But uh, anyway, that that just reminds me because uh, about you saying that you're in Tokyo because uh, I, I don't want to discredit my mom. I, I think she grasps it. But she doesn't totally get it unless she thinks she has to think about it for just a second. But initially, her her initial thought about this whole online thing is that uh, obviously people would know who I am and would be watching and would be engaged if they were like living close, like tr like television, like your local TV stars, like your local weatherman. So if you grew up in Cleveland, like I did, close to Cleveland, Dick Goddard was the Channel Eight weather guy that. Everybody knew, everybody knew who Dick Goddard was, but it's the irony of local TV is that you can be, you can be more famous in that particular city, that particular town than some mega movie star because just everybody loves the weatherman. But if you drive 50 miles, nobody knows who they are. Well, this is obviously much different. I explained that to my mom and I, I think she gets it. I think she gets it now. All right, Ballard's on the line. Ballard had made a comment on Twitter today concerning uh, what quarterbacks he is excited to see play. I don't exactly remember the the, the specific comment, but what quarterbacks he was. Uh, and uh, Ballard, you went you went top shelf on that comment with the quarterbacks. I went more. What quarterbacks am I intrigued to see how well they will play? That are kind of wild card. Kind of guys, Spencer Petrus at Wisconsin, at uh, Iowa, Graham Mertz at Wisconsin, Joey Gate. I listed him as a guy that I'm just curious to see how good is he going to be. Gatewood, Petrus, Mertz, and a few other guys that I went to. I really like this Boston College quarterback. Really like uh, Phil Jerkovic. Michael guesses 113. And again, these guesses are how many guests I had on a couple of years ago because I actually counted that year. And I would think that it would be pretty consistent. We'll go through the guesses and then I'll let you know that, uh, man, I should have a giveaway for this. George is at 55, Kyle at 54. And that looks like uh, the end of the guessing. Uh, I was in Dallas in the airport, but I had taken a flight from Houston to Dallas. So that one made it. So I was stuck in Dallas. In either 2018 or 19, I went back and counted all the guests we had on. We had on a hundred. You're going to like this number, Michael, 117 guests for the entire year. So I would think that we're somewhere close to that every year. Eric, what you got here? Imagine if I told you right before the start of the 21 season that an 8-4 and four ACC team and a 9-3 and three Big 12 team were being more hyped than a 9-1 and one SEC West team. Hmm, could that be North Carolina? Could that be Iowa State and Texas A&M? Talking about North Carolina and Iowa State and Texas A&M. Yeah, I guess I should have read the last line. Um... Well, there, there's reason for that. The reason for that, Eric, is threefold. One would be is that Iowa State is a team that most of us can just root for. Uh, they have been an underdog forever. It's been a program that just seemed like it would be impossible for them to win because how would they ever pull in players? And they're still, from a recruiting ranking standpoint, not pulling in the type players that should produce Teams that go nine and three finish in the top 10 and win Fiesta Bowls. But, and, and came within a touchdown of upsetting Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. So Iowa State's a feel good. Young coach, 
doing a great job and maximizing his talent and a, and a program. If you go through, yeah, they had some seven and five seasons every so often. Seneca Wallace back about 20 years ago, those type of quick spurts to a bowl game, but generally two and 10, three and nine, four and eight. And now they are legitimate contenders or so we think they were contenders last year. Okay. North Carolina, Mac Brown comes back to a job he already had. North Carolina should be better than they had been. And again, college football nation is just wanting somebody to challenge Clemson. And North Carolina's got the quarterback and they've got the skill position players, even though they lost the two running backs and the two receivers. Uh, uh, they've got a tremendous deep. They've got not a tremendous defense coming back. They've got a tremendous number of players who are talented coming back to the defense, which should be much improved and needs to be much improved. So it's about hope, Eric. It's about hope with the first two teams. And with Texas A&M, if Texas A&M was not in Alabama's division, people would be giving them a much more legitimate shot. So you can understand that, Eric. There's less talk about Texas A&M. First of all, I can't quantify what you're saying, but I get your vibe. I get it. You're probably right. That's what you're feeling. That's what you're seeing. I can't necessarily quantify that people aren't excited or talking about Texas A&M or hyped up about Texas A&M like they are the other two. But there's a Cinderella aspect, certainly to Iowa State. There's a... This team, North Carolina, can slay the giant, can possibly, they get a puncher's chance against Clemson to finally get somebody else into the college football playoff from the ACC. And with Texas A&M, it's, eh, they're good, but mm, Alabama. No free chilies. That happened to me about... Must have been more than 20 years ago when I was in Mississippi. I was uh, at a subway. And the girl at the counter recognized me because I was, uh, as I just explained, when you're on local television, there's just this concentration, especially back then. Uh, this is like 1998, 99, 2000, something in that range. So not everybody's walking around with a phone on the internet, local television is still like our, our ratings in our market were crazy good, crazy good. Like it was ridiculous, uh, the ratings that we got, but anyway, not because we were great, just because it's local television and local news. So anyway, I go into a subway, I order and, and the girl just, she's like, just take this for free. She was just going to give me a free sandwich. You know, I, I didn't necessarily feel right about and it was like a $6 value. So <laughs> I still paid, but uh, I, I said, I appreciate it. Another story, speaking of which, another story comes to mind that um, I was taking a friend to the airport and in Mississippi, uh, we lived in a particular place where in terms of major airports or semi-major airports, you, you had to drive. It it quite a haul to get to the closest major airport. So anyway, we were driving to Birmingham early, early in the morning. I had stayed up late, late at night. I wasn't in the best of moods. And so I am, I am moving and we had just left town. We hadn't even left town and I'm driving 75 and a 45, something like that. And my friends telling me who I'm taking to the airport. They, they have they have a lot of radar and a lot of police along this stretch. Uh, Mark, you better slow it down. And I just was not in the mood to be told what to do at that point. So I just kind of like, yeah, whatever. And uh, lo and behold, boom, I get pulled over. Cop comes up to the window, recognizes me, starts talking about my sports cast, lets me go, just says, can you just slow it down a bit? And then also, I'm on a roll talking about these uh, stupid stories, but um, 
Also, also, and thank you for the super chats. I'll get to them as soon as I get to them in the live chat. There was also a time, which I'm not proud of this. So I'm not proud of this, but I had a much worse driving record at one point. Now my driving record's clean. I'm not out tearing up the roads at all. But at one point in my life, in my late 20s, my driving record was pretty bad from speeding tickets. Tons of speeding tickets all over the place. I've got a, a story from South Carolina. I've got a story from Alabama, but I won't tell those right now. The one I will tell is that when I went to go renew my license, somebody's calling in. I'll get to you in just a second. When I went to renew my license, the young lady at the desk told me that I had too many points against my license and it was being suspended. It had been suspended and I could not get my license. However, this was, this was pre, you know, they, they were on computers, but the clunky computers, this is like 1998 or nine and they're on the clunky computers and it's not all tied into a database. And there's a lot of paperwork still involved at that point. She basically just gave me a license, just gave me a license, even though it was suspended and I had to go through a lot of hoops to get a license. She just. All right, let's take a call here. I have been completely derailed by myself, not by any of you, but by myself, because I am here to talk about the channel and at least to give to an update. Not that we can't talk about college football because we will, especially if I'm given good questions like I have been here. All right, let's get to it. I believe we've got uh, David on the line. David, how you doing tonight? Well, let me just say it right off the top. To the man that gives college football its voice, Mark Rogers. Hi, and how are you, sir? I am doing just fine. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I got a protein shake in one hand, and I'm talking college football with Mark Rogers. Nothing can be finer. I'll tell you that much, sir. Now, is this a protein shake that uh, you make yourself, or is it something that you just purchase and just drink it as is? No, I make it as myself. I have a blender and, you know, put a little okay. bit of uh, uh, I, peanut I, butter in there and chocolate. There and, we go. I do that myself. Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. Absolutely. Well, I wanted to give you a call. It's good to see you working the midnight hour, working the late night shift. I like it. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk a little college football with you. I, I didn't even know if you noticed this in the chat. And we may have touched upon this before, but I want to circle back to it. Do we have three coaches in the Big Ten on the hot seat this year in Jeff Brom, Scott Frost, and, of course, Jim Harbaugh? And could there be more? And if so, who might they be? I think out of those three that, of course, at Michigan and Nebraska, you have higher standards. Jeff Brom has basically had one poor season that was a full season. So he had the four and eight two years ago. And then this last season, what they go two and four. Uh, but I, I, I do agree with you that he's on the hot seat. I tend to always look at these situations and think um, if there has just been a downward trend that has started now with frost, it's been from day one now with Harbaugh and with Brom, it's been a recent trend. And really with right. Harbaugh, it's more about you need to win big games and win championships because I see comments coming to my channel every day. I've saw a few today that they make it sound like he's been losing eight games for five years. Now, uh, he just went right. nine and three two years ago. So he's had one bad season, but okay. I get it. He needs to win championships. So it's more about uh, not that he's, he's failing, uh, but he's failing to meet the standards. So. I think that, and I had this conversation with our guy, Justin Rowe, the other day. I think that the, the look or the context of the record, certainly we start with a record, but the context of the record, let's start with Harbaugh, is going to be very meaningful. Because if they go, they have a tough schedule. They've got yep. uh, Washington out of conference, of course, but it is at home. They, they should win that game. 
I'm um, not going to be surprised if they lose. It's an, it, it is a tough game, but they're they're Michigan. They're at home against Washington, and this Washington team shouldn't be great. They should win the game, uh, but I bet it's going to be a fourth quarter down to the the wire game is what it looks like to me. But uh, let's see, Wisconsin, Penn State, of course, Indiana, Ohio State. There might be somebody else difficult in there. Northwestern, I know, even though they might be a little bit. Uh, down. I don't. I don't know if they've got Iowa, but anyway, it stacks up as a difficult schedule. So I could see, right, David, if they are, let's say they're eight and three heading into the Ohio State okay. game. They're eight and three, and they've lost three games respectively. And then they give Ohio State, and let's say Ohio State's Ohio State. They're a top five team. Maybe sure. they're, maybe they're ten and one going into the game, and Michigan plays them really right. well. Michigan plays them really well, and it's a it's a 35-27 game, and it's a close game. So Michigan finishes the regular season eight and four. Then I think their I think their bowl game does matter in terms of a, a look, a narrative, because they've been so awful in these bowl games since Harbaugh's first season. They've lost them all. So if they go win a bowl okay. game after playing Ohio State close. And they're nine and four. I think he. I think there's a positive vibe there to say, okay, you played Ohio State close. The other games were respectable losses, as opposed to David. What we saw against Wisconsin the past two times they've played Wisconsin, where they've just been completely embarrassed. And of course, the Ohio State games have been embarrassments. Where, where if they 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 right. look like they're. They've got something to build on. They're nine and four with a bowl win and a respectable loss against Ohio State, where it's okay. We do expect a championship, but this season looked good. I think Harbaugh would keep his job under those kind of circumstances. But a nine and four could look bad. There could there can be a bad looking nine and four, where again it's it's 56. 24 against Ohio State, and it's they 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 get drubbed right. by somebody else. So that's where I see him with at least right. Harbaugh. Okay, before I get to Frost and Rob, I, I, I want to touch upon what you said with Jim Harbaugh. So we saying that the bar for the school up north, and I didn't hear, I saw your segment, I didn't get a chance to hear what the, the team up north, you know, uh, blogger or beat writer had to say uh, as far as what the win total or the magic win total was. But are we saying, at least in Mark Rogers' view, I wonder if this is Steve Dace's view as well. It'd be interesting to hear him comment on this. Is let's get let's get the nine wins, a lower tier bowl game, which is you know a nine and three season is going to produce. It's probably not going to produce a New Year six bowl game. So we're going to go to a mid tier to lower tier bowl game, go nine and four, and play Ohio State competitive, and that's what we're judging a successful season on. Wow. Well, I think we're I gotta judging. Admit, that's moving. I ahead. understand what you're going with that, David. That should not be good enough. But in light of what happened last year and what they were last year, that's significant improvement. Well, I, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, well, I mean, is, is, that, is that significant improvement than, let's say, when he went 10, I mean, because he did have, what, two 10 and 3 seasons. He had a 10 and 3 season in 16 and then a 10 and 3 season in 18. It just closed out poorly both of those years, losing his last two games in 16 and then losing his last two games in 18. But, I, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but I, I don't know. I, four losses, not even playing in a major bowl game. Maybe you win a lower tier bowl game and you've just played Ohio State competitive. That's and I know they brought down his salary from being where it was, but to be one of the you know better coaches in the country and still keep your job after that, I I don't know, Mark. You, you really did, did your I don't know if your Michigan blogger thinks that's good enough for him to keep his job, but wow, that seems like moving the ball really low to keep your job. I I don't know. That just strikes me that way, Mark. Well, um, I didn't want to get. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say. You're, you're certainly right in that while that's improvement, as I'm stating improvement over this past season, 
that's not improvement over what he's been doing. That's just another one in line with everything else that he's been doing. So, so you're right. That's, that's not improvement overall. That's pretty much what he's done since he showed up. Uh, I don't know how they're viewing that. I know that uh, Ward Manuel, when he announced the contract extension, the first thing out of his mouth of her sentence was something to the point that this is the guy to win championships, but also there was something in there about the bar being to win championships. So my first question was, does this mean immediately that's going to be the bar for 2021? What? And uh, if so, then uh, you you may be more right on that than I am. Yeah, I, I just don't see how you can go. See, well, well, this will be his seventh season, I believe, Mark. You know, without beating Ohio State or winning a Big Ten championship, and you keep your job. I just, I, I can't see that. I'm sorry. But, you know, I, I digress. Maybe they've moved the bar there to, to where they're, that's acceptable. Uh, on to Brom and on to Frost. So you do believe Frost gets a pass, even if Frost doesn't get to a bowl game, he's safe, you believe, or is that could that be dicey even if they don't get to a bowl game this year? And then it would be what, you know, four seasons without a bowl game and you know, I, I know you have the COVID year in there, but that's still three full seasons without a bowl game, which doesn't exactly look great either. So he's had three bad seasons and, and one was yeah. a COVID season, but it's still three bad seasons. And he didn't take over a program that was piling up bad seasons. They had had one bad season before he got there, but they, Mike Riley right. was Mike Riley got fired for pretty much going nine and he had a couple of nine and four seasons. And then he had one bad season and he got fired. So Scott Frost is now, Basically, the 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 roster talent, uh, much of it was, of course, Mike Riley's roster, uh, and and the, and the talent acquisition under him that was similar to what Frost has done. And Frost is not winning as many games as Mike Riley. And I, I really think that he needs to go six and six. They have a difficult schedule. They All have right. a really difficult schedule. They play. Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, of course, Northwestern, on down the line, Minnesota, et cetera. I think that they should, and I think this is going to be difficult to do, but I think they need to go to a bowl game. And I would even put some emphasis on that bowl game because I think they'll be playing somebody in another conference and it'll be a good test playing another six and six, seven and five team from another power five conference that they, they need to play well in that game as, as, as well and go, let's say seven and six. Yeah, I, I, I would think, it, I mean, because what is the bar at getting to a bowl game? I mean, that's not necessarily a high bar. I mean, you know, have what a six and six, seven and five record, you know, you would think that it's not asking for the sun, the moon and the stars especially what they've invested in, you know, now going into a fourth year and having some basically his talent in there through recruiting, you know, to at least be able to get to a bowl game is not, uh, you know what I mean? I don't think it's setting the bar too high. Um, I want to ask you about Brom, Mark. I mean, obviously the 18th season, you know, they had the upset of Ohio State and people were, so were talking about him as maybe, you know, looking at other jobs. I know they had injuries in 19, the obviously COVID year. Where do you see that? Is it just bottom line make or break, or do you think he's got, got a little bit of leeway there? I think that his bar is similar to Frost, that he needs to get to a bowl game. I, I think that it's it's kind of odd, his tenure there, because he took over a, a pretty struggling program and gave them an immediate lift. But that first year that he was there, they played better on defense than they did on offense. They had one of the better defenses in the Big Ten, and he's an offensive guy. Right. Uh, but but another reason for hope was not just him being able to win a few more games, get them to bowl play the first two years, but that the recruiting was significantly better, and he started bringing in you know Moore and Bell and 
uh, the, the recruiting classes right. were, were much better. Uh, and, right. uh, the, though that second team, <laughs> the, the second team, the team that beat Ohio state, uh, they had that win. They had another really not, not to that level of win, but they had a couple other good wins, but they really got blasted a number of times. They weren't that good. And then, right. uh, then four and eight the next season. So their football program looks to be after after improving considerably there for two seasons. Looks like it's the same football program he took over. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not that that much different than you know even going back to the Daryl Hazel era, which was not exactly very fruitful for them. So. Yeah, I, I, I think I think maybe a bowl game there could be a must, but we'll see. Um, hey, I wanted to ask you, Mark. Uh, you know, I on, on my I don't know if you've heard this. Uh, Why well, I, I said to you before my preseason rankings. I did my own preseason top little ten here. I had uh, Clemson as my preseason number one. Uh, curious, is uh, you heard anything from your Clemson people on whether Justin Ross is coming back this year? Has he decided whether he's going to play this year or not? I'm just curious. Oh, sure. They all believe that he's going to play this year. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Because there was talk that he might, you know, because of his injury or, you know, what have you, they, they weren't, wasn't mm-hmm. sure whether he was going to come back or not. But uh, they're, they're leaning towards the old be playing this season, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Yeah, because I think that'll be big. That's why they're my preseason one, by the way. They get him back. I like ukulele at quarterback. And then I'm telling you, that defensive line is going to be the best in the country this year. And they've got, what, 10 starters back on defense. Mm-hmm. So that's my pre- early preseason number one. So okay. you haven't done like a – go ahead. I'm sorry, Mark. No, I was just uh, just responding to your number one selection there. You haven't done like a way too early yet, have you, yet, Mark? Well, I did one right after the season ended. I did one way back, pre-spring. Oh, okay. I had Clemson you, you, you wait to kind of work. three. Oh, I'm sorry. But I didn't factor okay. in the schedule. I didn't factor in the schedule, number one. Number two, I wanted right. to get through spring practice, so it was a pre-spring practice. So it's a pre George Pickens injury, for example. Uh, right. And then, uh, yeah, I would like to see who wins some quarterback battles, not among necessarily the top teams. And I think Ohio state's Ohio state regardless, but, uh, yeah, I typically make predictions like the week before the season starts. Right. Right. Hey, by the way, have you heard from your Oregon people who might be the starting quarterback there? Because I know that one quarterback transferred out. Yeah, so they've got a three-man race, which, of course, they've got the one experienced guy, Anthony Brown. He's nothing special, but Ty Thompson was a tremendous recruit, one of the top three quarterbacks in the country, but he's a true freshman. And then uh, Andrew Butterfield, is, uh, he was a pretty highly rated quarterback as well. Uh, I think the conventional thought there is that uh, Brown will be the week one starter, but that he will be on thin ice. Right. Well, yeah, that's what's going to be interesting to me coming into that game. I mean, I'm, I'm, I like what I saw from Stroud from our perspective in, in, in the spring game. Plus, I know we're going to surround him with more than enough talent. So, uh, I, although I tell you what. The Minnesota opening game being on Thursday night could be a tricky one at Minnesota. That's going to be interesting. Although, I wonder if Minnesota kind of enters. Maybe it's good that Minnesota doesn't enter the season with nearly as much hype as they did going into last season, wouldn't you say? Maybe that helps them a little bit. Yeah, not a whole lot is expected. I think they're going to be pretty good. I think they're going to be a bowl team. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm by. I think Flex is a solid coach, and then they do have their quarterback back in Tanner Morgan, right? Yeah, they've got their best running back, their best wide receiver, and their best quarterback, and they've got all five offensive linemen coming back. 
Oh, really? Uh, I, I thought Bateman was their best receiver. Well, yeah, Rashad, but I'm sorry. They they have one of their starting wide receivers coming back. Yes. Chris Hallman. Okay. 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 They still have Ibrahim back at running back, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. He's a good little player. Yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting going up there, especially with a new quarterback first start. So, you know, I, I want to see how they look. That first game should be interesting. I'll offer them an, an interesting test before Oregon the second week. So, We'll have to see how that plays out. Hey, Mark, you're talking about doing things in, in guests on, or for the future of the channel. Do you uh, any uh, insights on any future guests that you might be having down the road? In addition to whom's the, you know the guests that are already on, uh, I would like to have. Uh, I should be able to have Phil Steele back on here as soon as he wraps up his oh his deal which is usually sometime in mid to late June. Uh, but I've, I've spoken to him when I say spoken to him, messaged him and, he, and he's responded uh, about coming on. But again, he's really locked in on his publication until whenever the date is. Uh, so uh, he would be one, but uh, I haven't necessarily really locked in on anybody else or thought about anybody that's not a regular. Why do you have any suggestions, requests? Well, I, I'm gonna th- uh, well, the number one guy, and I've said it before, and I would love to hear you guys talk college football, is, is the great Joel Klatt. I would think that would be a great discussion. Um, number two it would be interesting, just because of, of the way he is. It, it would be the mouth of the South, Paul from I found, I found think, I think both of those guests would be interesting, but interesting for different reasons. What do you think, Mark? Well, of course, I would love to have either one of them on. I'm sure you understand that uh, just from the standpoint of uh, it helping the channel, but also just to talk college football. Uh, I have great respect for Joel Klatt. And uh, the times that people have suggested that I bring him on, uh, the only avenue that I know of that I have to to, to reach out to people and, and him in particular is just to go on Twitter and just hit him up in, in public, <laughs> you know, just, just on Twitter. And so that's why I made a big deal when we were talking about guests maybe a month ago when I was asking for people to make their requests that if, if people on Twitter see that I have requested somebody to come on the show, that, What's going right. to get them on the show more so than me requesting is if they see a lot of people want them on my show, you know, if people chime in and then say, Hey, Joel, yeah, we would love to see you with Mark, um, discussing college football. And they're, they're going to respond more so from that than they are going to respond to me. Right. I think. Well, I follow about Twitter. I follow about Twitter too, Mark. I'll I'll throw it out there to him. By the way, yeah, I don't think I follow him on Twitter. But you know, I'm just making the point that I've hit him up on Twitter because I have no other way of hitting him up. I don't think I follow him on Twitter, but that doesn't really matter. But um, uh, da 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 da. da. And then the other one was uh, yeah, Paul Feinbaum. The same thing. Yeah. Your, your former co-worker at ESPN there, Mark. Co-worker at ESPN. I would have had a better chance of uh, flagging him down then than I do now, and that's one of the reasons why I had on, I don't know if you've seen uh, my conversations. I used to have uh, Peter Burns from the SEC Network on a lot. Uh, he used to come on here right. quite a bit, but uh, and he's a good guy. But, uh, yeah, fine, bomb. The, the deal with ESPN, though, is I, I don't know – what kind of uh, what type of stipulations they have with it? It may depend on that particular contract with that individual, or it may be an overarching policy that they have. I had a conversation with Phil Steele right in the ESPN cafeteria one time because, uh, and and I had already had him on a couple times, but I approached him in the cafeteria and we talked. And uh, he at that point in time he couldn't. Uh, come on here because of his contract stipulation 
but that must have changed. Right. Well, I love Phil Steele. I think I like I said, Mark. I think he does. You know, one of the best, if not still the best, college football preview, no doubt. Sure. So, I think it's awesome that you have him on. Hey, it, it, just from an Ohio State perspective, because I appreciate Ohio State football history. Jack Park would be a really interesting guest if you could ever mm-hmm. get him on. That's... By the way, I don't know if you've heard of Jack Park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. He knows almost, knows almost as much about the history of Ohio State football as I do. Almost as much. But, <laughs> you know, really, really super knowledgeable guy and uh, would be very interesting conversation. I can see from where I'm sitting a, a, a Jack Park book on one of my tables. There you go. That actually yeah. has yeah, uh, think... an autograph from Archie Griffin in it. Oh, really? I think I've told you my Archie Griffin story, haven't I? I've got two Archie Griffin stories. Yeah, you, you met him through the, uh, was it the Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Yeah, that's uh, that was when I really met him. Actually, I came across him a few years prior to that. Not that he would he would remember it because it was just all you know. Uh, I I went to a Buckeye, like a Buckeye. It was called a Buckeye Bash. A bunch of boosters. Uh, I I went uh, and uh, that's when he signed the book. Uh, or actually, I didn't. I'm not big into like approaching people and having them sign things and so forth. It was actually my my uh, fiance at the time, she approached Archie Griffin behind my back. I didn't know she was doing it. She went and purchased the book. She went, you know, she just excused herself or whatever. And she went and did all that and got Archie Griffin to sign the book and all that. And, get, and, and I don't think she gave it to me that night. I think she gave it to me later. I think it was a, a present. Right. And then, yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of odd that uh, I lived in Ohio at the time. And then four years later, I'm in Mississippi, and he shows up, and uh, and uh, we we more formally met, and were able to talk, and so forth and so on. And that was, uh, yeah, I consider that a a highlight of of my career. Uh, not just being, a, I've interviewed all sorts of people, but to, to have that type of interview where a guy was that nice to be able to uh, change his plans and make a special trip to come to the TV station to. To sit down and and uh, talk football was was very kind of him. Yeah, I, a family member of mine lived in Columbus for a long period of time. I met him a couple of occasions. So he's just a super super human being. Really nice man. Really nice man. Yeah, that's my experience. Well, as always, Mark Rogers, a pleasure to talk college football with you, even at the midnight hour here and. As always, keep up the good work, my friend. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Take care. Now, see, I can't hang up on people when my monitor goes to sleep. Then it takes me forever to have to log back in, get this thing rolling. Here we go. Kyle Pickett, thank you so much for the super chat. So much appreciated, Kyle. Thank you for that. Thanks, Mark Rogers, the voice of college football. Thank you so much, Kyle. All right. I am finally going to run down. (laughs) I thought I was. Here, we've got another call coming in. All right. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. Who's on the line? Hey, Mark. It's Michael. How are you doing, sir? Michael, how's it going tonight? I wasn't in the mood, but now I'm kind of in an agitated mood. But I got to ask you a question first. I'm trying to figure out where did you get your earpiece from, by the way? Where did I get my earpiece from? That wow, you're that's wearing a good in your question. Sure. Uh, I don't remember. When I purchased. Uh, whatever I purchased, I, re- I really can't answer that. I, uh, I made an Amazon purchase at some point. I don't even remember when I got this. I got it a lot. I got it a lot earlier than I started using it. 
I had had it for a long time before I started using it. And I just started using it when we started this call in process, but I had had it for quite a long time. I'm looking at what it's attached to, to try to try to see if that will refresh my memory. Looking at this. Um, okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I really can't answer that. I know I got it on Amazon. I just did a, a search oh. on Amazon when I was buying other equipment and I needed an earpiece. Uh, are you looking to purchase something specific? Yeah, something like that for myself. But I was just wondering, I'll probably go through Amazon anyway. All right. <clears throat> First thing I'm trying to figure out is this. Yeah, Purdue had a rough season in 2018, and they got safe fit with injuries in 2019. But the 2018 team, they was young. You realize those first three games they lost were all winnable games. They committed dumb penalties late in the game because they had young players. They had Northwestern stops late in the game, but they committed, I can't remember who it was, someone committed late, that dumb personal foul penalty. In those, in those Western in the Blizzard clock out the Eastern Michigan game, Purdue was actually winning that game in 1917. And then there was a pass interference similar, similar to what happened last year with Minnesota. But this time they called Purdue in this Missouri. They just couldn't stop up. Drew, what was his name? Drew, um, the quarterback from Missouri back there in 2018. Drew Locke? Yeah, they couldn't stop him. And they got too far down and stuff. But in 2019, they were taken by injuries. At one point, they was missing three fourths of their starters. I'm telling you, Mark, and call me crazy for this, but if anybody on their team is missing that many player starters on their team, you'll be lucky. Purdue was lucky to be 4 and 8, and they was in some of those games most of the team that year, too. They just couldn't get it done and stuff. I'm like, Purdue's problems on the hot seat. Maybe he, the team, I think the seat will be won this year. Um, but I don't think it'd be too hot for him because I think Purdue will be a Nate win team this year. But I think you had him going what six and six or seven and five. I have not made a prediction on the season. Uh, I only gave a way too early top twenty five in which Purdue was not involved there. So I have yet to make a prediction on Purdue. If I pulled up the schedule, I could give you an estimation on, I don't know if we at some point went through the schedule and I gave you a six and six. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Who are their uh, Eastern division opponents? Hey, let me look it up. So I'll say IU and uh, let me look it up here a bit. Let me look it up for the Eastern. It's Ohio State. I think it's Ohio State, Michigan State, and um, IU. Yep. And two of those games is going to be at Purdue. It's going to be Michigan State and um, IU is going to be at Purdue this year. And Ohio State will be at in Columbus. But Ohio State most likely will get to win. Will I be shocked if Purdue wins? No, because of the tightness of how close those games usually come every year with Purdue and Ohio State. But they got to break the 33 year, 34 year jinx at, um, in Columbus, too. That's how long we've been since Purdue last one in Columbus. Well, Michael, you understand when you say jinx that there's been a 34 year jinx, you know who's been the better team almost every one of those seasons. Yeah. Well, except, with, okay, let me ask you this. Can you say, the 2000 Purdue team, the 2000 Ohio State team was better than the 2000 Purdue team. Well, you had a Hall of Fame quarterback, so maybe that breaks the tie. Now, yeah. of course, Purdue won that game, as you know. It was a classic in West Lafayette. Uh, what, 31 27 mm -hmm. with the long pass from Drew Brees with about three, four minutes left in the game. I would say Ohio State had mm -hmm. a more talented team. I think the NFL draft would show that Ohio State had a more talented team, but Purdue. They both went. Uh, they both went eight and four that year. Purdue won the head-to-head -head game, but it was at home. That's that's pretty much of a toss-up. But of course, the the tiebreaker, if you're going to go to it, is the the quarterback comparison wasn't even close. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Wouldn't no, it wasn't. Cring I'm trying to think who did before Cringle. Purdue was probably better in '99. Mm-hmm. 
you have that it was and stuff. And they should have, there was a couple of things they should have went there too, but it is what it is. But no, I'm just going to say, Keith, all I'm going to say is Keith, yeah, he's going to have some issues this year because you're going to, like I said, third defensive coordinator in three years. I'm telling you, Keith sleep on Purdue to go surprise the people this year. Michael, I apologize. I'm I'm having difficulty hearing you. The the connection isn't the bit the best. It's a little muffled. But uh what is the uh the record in West Lafayette though? Hasn't Purdue won like four of the last five or four of the last six? What against Ohio State? Yes. I think uh, yeah, I think it is four I think it's five of the last six. But this game, year's game is in Columbus, so that's what I'm saying. Sure. It's going to be a tough challenge. But like I said, nobody even knows who's going to be the starting quarterback for Ohio State. I think it's going to be Stroud, but we'll see what happens, though. And I don't think it. I actually think I use, if they keep hitting back or with um, Zach, I can't think of his last name, the one that finished the season for IU, his name is Stroud, looks like on me. Michael Penix? No, well, not Penix, but the other one that replaced him when Penix blew me out. Oh, Jack, Jack uh, um, Tuttle. Yeah. Like, I, they're both good quarterbacks, but I think if Penix is back this year, considering the Heisman Trophy candidate, I don't know if he'll win it because I think it'll be Rattlers to lose, but I got a feeling I used to be on a mission to win the Big Ten East, and I think they might find a way to get it done this year, too. Okay, again, Michael, I, I'm just having difficulty hearing you. One more time, what, what you're making some kind of prediction there? I'm think, yeah, I'm thinking I use what I actually shock them that win the Big Ten East this year. Okay, Indiana wins the, uh, that's that's your, uh, somebody had asked about a funny bounce, so that's your funny bounce. Indiana wins the Big Ten East. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be somewhat surprised. If yeah. Ohio State doesn't clean up their really, secondary play and their is. linebacker mm-hmm. play, but especially their secondary, and I I don't think they're going to – I I think that they can't play much worse in the secondary, but I don't think they're going to be substantially better. They didn't – none of those players – Recruit nobody. Yeah, so, so nobody – nobody that's playing for Ohio State in the secondary that has log time there – is really a has shown to be a good player. Like you can't look at any of their mm-hmm. starting position players. Now there's some guys that are serviceable that aren't disasters, but none of them are are good. Like none mm-hmm. of them are anywhere close to all Big Ten players. As mm-hmm. it stands right now, that is true. They could live up to their recruiting rankings suddenly this year, but based on what they've shown us, mm-hmm. yeah. I agree. One last thing before I let you go. If Brett Bielema with the GMI night, how long do you think he's given before they can get back to being relevant in the Big Ten West? Three years. That's what I'm thinking. All right, dude. And a lot of people thinking that I was going to win the Big Ten West this year. No, they won't. I see them going 9 and 3 8 4. But as always, Mark, thanks for taking my call. Have a good night, sir. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Take care. Yep. All right. Uh, good to hear from Michael. All right. Uh, so basically what uh, I wanted to explain tonight is that um, use your analogy here as a college football fan. If your team's humming along at uh, like seven and five, eight and four every year uh, and, and you want to win championships and you expect to win championships, well, seven and five and eight and four is not going to get it done. So basically what's going on here on our channel is we're going seven and five and eight and four. That's what we're doing. We're going seven and five and eight and four, and we're posting a lot of content that is not resonating. Uh, and it's always a guessing game as to how to make that happen on YouTube. First of all, you've got to produce good content. So if, if you produce garbage content and you can come up with all the fancy thumbnails and all the great titles, and you may, that may benefit you in the short term, but obviously, uh, the people watching the content and seeing that uh, you don't know what you're talking about and it's boring and it's not good content uh, will figure you out and you'll fail eventually. So 
I don't know if it's a content thing or what it is, but basically uh, much of what we've produced since the end of the season is not uh, succeeding. And it's, uh, I hate to state it this way, but it's a fact. It's, it's a waste of my time. It's just a complete waste of my time because if a video is going to get three or 400 views and make like a dollar, <laughs> then that's not going to in any way, shape or form cut it. So it's a complete and utter waste of time. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut ties with a lot of people that we have on as guests because uh, it has nothing to do with their quality. It has nothing to do with their contribution. It has to do with the teams that they cover uh, that that just don't resonate. Uh, I can't uh, I can't produce uh, Iowa videos or Utah videos or fill in the blank for the next um, on a consistent basis for the next three years, hoping that Iowa fans are going to find me or again, fill in the blank for that particular team. Uh, it's just a complete and utter waste of time. Now I would love to have fan base represented across the nation, but it's just, that's just not reality. Uh, that's what we would strive to be here. So we have cluttered up this channel with, just tons of videos that see for me, I got to stop producing videos for me in a sense. I'm producing videos for me. Uh, I hate to pick on Iowa, but I'll continue to put, pick on the Hawkeyes here. Uh, when I have the Iowa guy on Corey, he's been on a few times, for example, I love those discussions. I can talk Iowa football every day. I would do an Iowa live stream if uh, it got supported. I could talk Kansas State football. I could talk fill in the blank. Fill in your team. I can talk about anybody and enjoy it and hear about their linebacker core this season and hear about the wide receivers and all that. But the the fact is, is that only really hardcore college football fans want to listen to that. Therefore, what you have succeeding online and on YouTube in particular is a bunch of gimmicky kind of videos. Uh, that I think uh, appeal to the lowest common denominator uh, to a large extent. I, I just think they're stupid. <laughs> they like I see I see videos that have uh, large view totals that I just think are inane. But the wise, successful YouTubers will tell you you produce content for your viewership for your fans, for your followers, you don't produce it for you. Maybe every so often you produce a video thinking, you know what? I really want to talk about this and nobody's going to watch it, but I just want to do it and I'm going to put it out there, but you're not going to be successful here, uh, producing videos that you want to produce. You have to produce the videos that people are going to watch. So I've been too stubborn in producing the kind of channel that I want to a certain extent. Uh, where I need to deviate. And, uh, you know, if you're going seven and five, eight and four, and your goal is to win a championship, and you just keep going seven and five, eight, four, and doing the same things over and over and over, then you're a fool. Uh, the definition of insanity is we all know what it is doing the same thing over and over and expecting things to change. So I don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but I produce way too much content. So that's the first thing I produce way too much content. The more I look into YouTube channels and I see other people talk, uh, the big problem that most YouTube channels. And when I say most, I mean like 98% of them have is they, they have difficulty producing enough content. That's always the, 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 the cry is we don't know how to produce enough content. I've got the exact opposite problem. I produce too much content. And it's cluttering up the channel. It's cluttering it up. And um, I believe that YouTube kind of fights back against that. And the algorithms kind of suppress me. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. When I've got 25,000 subscribers and I'm churning out videos and I got like 300 views on them, uh, there's some kind of uh, suppress uh, suppression there. So anyway... Um, 
because then it, YouTube's going to fight against me. If and I, when I say YouTube's fighting against me, I don't mean that that's a conscious decision. I mean the the inner workings, the algorithms. If I produce video after video and it doesn't get a response, and the click through rate, if you're wise to YouTube lingo, is not successful, then I'm going to continue to get suppressed by churning out, I'll call it bad content, content that's not successful. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to play to my strengths and I'm going to analyze college football. It's basically what I'm going to do. And am I still going to have guests on? Yes, I'm still going to have guests, but I'm going to produce a video. My goal is to produce one video per day that's analyzing college football, meaning I'm ranking quarterbacks. I'm ranking defensive linemen. I am running through uh, preseason versus postseason rankings from the last 20 years. I am going through analytics and statistics, and I'm taking a very analytical approach to college football. Because if I listen to the feedback that you give me, it's that maybe the two best things that we do here would be talk to you, meaning call-in shows, and number two, analyze college football. Because I constantly have people requesting things like compare the 2013 Florida State Seminoles with the 2001 Miami Hurricanes. Uh, compare this, contrast that. Look at this team versus that team. Uh, all sorts of analytics type measurements. So that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to do call-in shows. All the live streams, all the team live streams are going to team channels. They're gone. They will not be here on this channel anymore. The Ohio State live stream is going to the Ohio State channel. That's what it's there for. That's going to be all Ohio State content. The Nebraska live stream that we do on Tuesday nights going to the Nebraska channel, the Oklahoma live stream. Think of it this way. We did an Oklahoma live stream for the first time last Friday afternoon, not even during a time in which many people are online. We did it at 2.30 in the afternoon. And if I would have done that here, even with 25,000 subscribers, there would have been 30 people watching, like there are like now, 42. But basically, almost unannounced, the first time ever putting it on an Oklahoma channel where I've got barely a thousand subscribers, there were like 70 people online. It's got over a thousand views. So that can be built. So all the team specific live streams, Florida State, Miami, Ohio State, Nebraska, Oklahoma, they are going to their channels. If anybody out there would like, uh, another team to be added, pick your team, whomever, LSU, Florida, Kansas, whoever. If you want a live stream for that particular team, then please talk to me. And as long as that can be supported, then I would love to do more team-specific live streams. I think they're great. I think, and I think they're all unique the Miami ones are different than the Florida State ones, than the Ohio State ones, than the Nebraska one, and now the Oklahoma one. They're all different, unique, have a different feel, vibe, personality to them. Uh, so I enjoy all of them and would love to do more, but they need to be supported. But they are going to be on those channels. And again, I would ask that uh, if you enjoy what we do here and want to support the channel, there's two great ways to do that. Pick out a channel or two, and I will tell you, Nebraska and Oregon would be the two best examples that are close to a thousand subscribers. And please subscribe. Subscribe to Oregon and Nebraska, those two in particular, uh, because once you get thousand uh, past a thousand subscribers, I'm better understanding now that a subscriber total is just it's just window dressing. It just looks impressive. There are people that have 10,000 subscribers on channels that are making gobs of money and have hundreds of thousands of views. There are people that have 100,000 subscribers that, and then you got people like me, 25,000 subscribers that churn out all sorts of videos that nobody watches. So the subscriber total 
you know, it's, it's nice. It's good. But I think all of you as YouTube consumers probably recognize that the videos that YouTube suggests to you aren't necessarily from channels that you subscribe to. That's not the formula. The formula is what do you watch? So if you're watching, if you're subscribed to me and you never watch me, YouTube is not going to suggest my videos to you. On the other hand, I'm sure that there are many of you who don't subscribe to me, but you're watching now and you've watched a bunch of videos. And so YouTube will continue to, to suggest my videos, even though you're not subscribed to me. So being uh, a subscribed to a particular channel or as a content creator, having a certain number of subscribers just looks good. And I don't even think 25,000 is really that many, but it's, I'm thankful for all of you and thankful for, uh, the 25,000. Uh, but it, it doesn't really help. What helps is that people watch the videos and they watch them for a long duration of time, which I never had an issue with that. When people watch the videos, they watch them for a long duration of time. I've always had good duration, time duration watched for each video compared to the average, but it's getting people to watch the videos. It's getting the videos out there that I'm having a huge issue with that has to improve considerably. Uh, so again, we're going to unclutter the channel. The channel will be call-in shows, and I know, and I appreciate everybody being here, and I uh, I apologize for not being as consistent as I need to do, uh, need to be with the call-in shows at specific times because I run into other live streams and things that I'm doing, but the, the call-in shows need to be at specific times, and I need to be here, boom, every time. But here on this main channel, we're going to do call-in shows. We are going to produce analytics and we are going to respond to late breaking news. If it's big, if uh, South Carolina got a commitment from a three star, I'm going to put that on the SEC channel. All right. I'm talking about breaking news when Mark Antonio steps down, when Willie Tagger gets fired, when Mark Richt steps down. All those have done extremely well when I come on here for late breaking news in the moment. So, Right here, call-in shows, analytics, late-breaking. And if it's a big, big power where I think a video is going to do well, it may still be here. If it's Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, whomever, that I believe it's still going to do well here, then I'm, I may still post a conversation once in a while here. But basically, I need to be tunnel-visioned. We need to niche down because I'm stretched all over the place and it's not successful. Again, we're a seven and five football team. I was going to say eight and four. I don't even think we're eight and four. We're not eight and four. Maybe we used to be eight and four. I think I was eight and four last year, but we've taken a tumble. I might be six and six. I'm barely getting to a bowl game. That's where we are. We're, we are, um, man, can't look at last season because last season didn't really add up that way. So we're Mark Antonio's last Michigan State team. Six and six, we beat Wake Forest. Maybe, maybe I'm losing the bowl games. Although bowl season does well around here. I was so encouraged and so hyped up during college football playoff time. And of course, there are going to be more people engaged and uh, interested and here, but we had live streams that week uh, around Christmas into New Year's around college football playoff time. We had a live stream with over 900 people on here. I thought we were rolling because that wasn't the only one. Had that been the only one, I would have said, okay, that was a fluke. Uh, and it was around the college football playoffs. Uh, it might've been after the playoff game after the two playoff games, possibly. But that, no, that was kind of the culmination of about two weeks of live streams almost every day where we were doing, there were a few that went over 500. Like, we need 1,000 people in here. We need 1,500 people in here. 
And, and so that's where you all can help as well is uh, let people know that we're here doing live streams. So understand this, that you have people that you connect with on Twitter, Facebook, and elsewhere who have no idea that we are here talking college football every day. They have no idea who I am. They have no idea that we're here and they're college football fans. So please let those people know that we are here. That is probably what you can do more than anything to help the channel. My monitor keeps going to sleep. That will help us build the channel. We'll be letting people know that we're here. And if you talk directly to people, say, you love college football? There's a guy who talks college football every day for smart fans like us. And again, just taking the links and sending those out on Twitter. I'm going to call out Lewis. If Lewis is out here watching right now, that guy, and, and I don't want to uh, not acknowledge other people, but Lewis comes to mind in particular. Lewis is on Twitter sending out everything I send out and letting people know Mark's on live. He's coming up. He's live retweeting everything. Doom. Just constantly. All right. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Uh, I'm not doing this to be seven and five. Number one, we want excellence. Number two, uh, <laughs> just the uh, reality of the situation from the, from the standpoint of earning a living makes it uh, necessary to succeed. All right. I am way behind in the live chat, and I will let everyone know. And, of course, you can shop Amazon using the link. That, uh, uh, again, that goes without saying, but uh, I got to say it because some of you do that. And and uh, the last live stream that I mentioned, the Amazon link, about three people said, Mark, I use the Amazon link. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. So let's, uh, I will get the number up here if anybody else wants to call. Meanwhile, I'm just going to go through the, uh, the chat and make sure I didn't miss anything. There you go, Matthew. That's the formula right there. I subscribe to all the channels. Just turn off the notifications for the other schools. So Matthew's like, I'm a Nebraska fan. Turn on the notifications for Nebraska. I subscribe to the other channels. And then I just shut off the notifications so I don't get annoyed. And, and, and really, Matthew, once we get well past 1,000, you can drop your subscription. I've even heard that that hurts if you have a bunch of subscribers who don't watch your channel. Some of this, a lot of this YouTube stuff is just uh, trying to figure out uh, what works and what doesn't. Here we got uh, now this guy right here. It's just phenomenal. Falcon ERX. Just getting the job done there. Falcon ERX, thank you so much for the super sticker. Falcon ERX is the one person who uses the super sticker. All right, we got a call coming in. Let's talk some college football. No idea who this is. Welcome to the voice of college football. Who's on the line? Hey, Mark. It's Elias speaking. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. What you got tonight? Good. I sent I sent you a tweet the other day. I don't know if you saw it because I I probably commented on an old tweet of yours, but I'm just wondering what hypothetically you would think. Um, I'm just going to ask this, and then I'll hang up, and I'll, I'll just listen to you. What hypothetically you think the point spread would be for the Miami Alabama game, and what do you think money line would be for both respective teams? And I also just want to say uh, God bless you and your family, Mark, and I hope that uh, 
your YouTube channel grows uh, exponentially, and I wish you guys all the best. I appreciate that so much. Let me keep you on the line for just a second, because for some reason, our calls, our last two calls, not coming through great. So I, I got the first part of that, that you want me to project a point spread. Well, what's the second part of that? Oh, I think we lost him. Okay, appreciate the, the, the call. For some reason, the last couple of calls have been very muffled for me. Uh, so Miami, Alabama. So we've got a team that dominated college football last year and uh, is projected to be a top three team playing a neutral site game against Miami. Alabama, during Nick Saban's run, has routinely scheduled games like this. Aside from the Florida State game where the Seminoles were ranked number three in 2017, they have typically scheduled Wisconsin, Michigan, Clemson when they weren't Clemson, Virginia Tech, West Virginia, et cetera. Teams that they can handle, uh, the, the last few were really bad, Duke and Louisville, when Louisville was awful. Uh, but, but more or less, these uh, top 15 kind of teams that they're going to handle and I expect that point spread, doesn't 17 sound uh, right? Alabama neutral site against Miami, 17. Uh, the health of De'Ara King going into that game could be pivotal. Uh, I, I don't know if he asked anything. I, I thought he had another question past that. I will say this, that I've stated this a number of times in analyzing Miami's football team is that they were decidedly superior to everyone on their schedule last year, excluding two teams, Clemson and North Carolina. Therefore, it was difficult for me to get a gauge on Miami, for the most part, playing Virginia, Virginia Tech, Pitt every week, and winning those games, usually slopping through those games. They rarely dominated. They looked good against Louisville, for the most part, especially offensively, but they had a lot of sluggish kind of wins against marginal teams. Early in the season, they got the test against Clemson. I thought that if Miami was able to make that a two score game and be in the game going into the fourth quarter, you know, down 27, 17, something in that range, that that would be a, a good sign. I don't want to call it a moral victory because the players on the field want to win, but for those of us evaluating the game, that that would be a good sign if they were able to keep it close. Well, they had to have a fluke blocked kick to get 10 points on the board at halftime uh, at 21, 10. They were never in that game. They were outclassed. They were run off the field. It was pretty ugly. They weren't like annihilated beyond belief. 56-3, but that 42-17 was Clemson cruising. So then the other game was the North Carolina game. And so I thought, finally, we get to see two top 15 teams and everybody's, and I, I tend to, even though I'm neutral and evaluate everyone, of course, there's a huge Miami contingent that uh, is always asking me to evaluate their team and asking me questions. So I was looking at it more from a Miami standpoint that I wanted them to finally play a team on their level because they played it a ton of teams under their level and they played Clemson well above their level and certainly showed that they were not uh, ready for that game. And then North Carolina annihilated them. The Oklahoma State game, even though they lost it, showed that, okay, here's a top 15 to 20 team on Miami's plane that they, they played competitively against. There were players missing on both sides, and of course, Deere King got hurt. Uh, so Miami, uh, again, this is going to be another testing ground for Miami football coming into this season. And even though Alabama seems like, okay, this is an amazing game to see Miami play Alabama and see what they're made of, I don't know that it is. If it turns out to be another Clemson-type game where they don't get annihilated, but they're clearly outclassed into the first five minutes of the game, there we can see it that early, and it turns out to be 42-17. That's not going to tell me a lot about this team. What would tell me a lot about Miami would be for them to be competitive against Alabama or for them to be playing Penn State or Texas. Somebody on that. Iowa, 
Wisconsin, USC on that plane. All right, we got a call coming in, and I believe this may be the same caller that may be able to clarify uh, what he was asking there. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. Who's on the line? Hey, Mark. Yeah, I just gonna. I just heard. Uh, I just played it back, and I heard. Uh, I hung up a little bit earlier. I was saying, what was the money line odds would be for Miami? Oh, since if you go to plus seventeen, line. what do you think it'd be for Miami? Well, yeah. if it's uh, if it's seventeen, that's my guess. Then what would that be? Uh, there, there's a pretty clear formula. You, I bet you could Google that. I would just be guessing what the 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 conversion is, but there's there's a pretty clear. There are other factors involved, but it's pretty clear what the yeah what the conversion is there. It might be plus maybe like a three twenty. Something in that range? I think it'd be more than that. I think it'd be higher. I feel like it'd even be like seven or eight to one at least. Oh, you think it's like? Because I thought your point spread was quite low. Yeah, I think the money line would be higher. And I think I thought that's actually generous. I thought it was going to be like at least you were going to say plus twenty one for Miami or something like that. Because it just seems that Alabama just blows all these teams out that uh, that they play. I think that would be a fair line to get action on both sides too. Oh, I agree with you. That that if this line came out at seventeen, I would take Alabama as soon as I could get to a computer. Uh, I I just I just grabbed seventeen. Actually, now that you say that, somebody asked that question maybe a month ago, and I did say twenty one. Uh, and one last question: What when do you think the last time, or when was the last time a team like Miami beat a team like Alabama that you were just completely surprised? that they won the game. Okay. Are you saying Alabama specifically or a team like Alabama when you say that? Yeah. Let's let's say September 4th, Miami beats Alabama. What would that be comparable to? Well, during the Saban era, it would be comparable to one of those Ole Miss teams in 2014 and 15 that beat Alabama. Although I think those teams were slightly better. Than, than what I project Miami to be. One of those teams won a Sugar Bowl. The team before played in the, they beat, uh, that was the team that lost to TCU in the Peach Bowl. They were good teams, but they were in that comparable area. And Alabama still, of course, went on to go to the playoffs in 2014 and win a national championship in 2015, but they lost to Ole Miss both of those years. The 2016 Clemson team that lost to Pitt, uh, 43-42. So there's a national championship Clemson yeah, team that right lost to us. Uh, yep, that's with my favorite, uh, my favorite team's uh, quarterback of the future at the time, Nathan Peterman. There you go, Nathan Peterman and James Conner, 43-42. And of course, if you well, I was going to mention the Clemson team that lost to. Syracuse and Syracuse was four and eight, but that Clemson team, they were good. They went to the playoffs, but with Kelly Bryant, at quarterback 2017, they're, they're nothing close to that 2017 Clemson team, nothing close to what Alabama has been the last couple of years. I believe Pitt won that game against Clemson with a last second field goal, right? I think that's what happened. I know it was 43, 42. I don't remember if they kicked a last second field goal. Because I, I remember betting on that game, and I was stressing with Pitt's kicker. His last name was Blewett. So oh, I yeah. So I that quite uh, That's right. amusing when he was going to kick the game-winning field goal. I remember him. Yeah. It's ironic that that same year, 43, Clemson, 40, having won the national championship game, they would not have gone to the championship game or a playoff if the North Carolina state kicker would have made a kick at the end of regulation, that was only like a 32 yarder. Now, why is it in college football? Do they have to kick so far to the left hash or the right hash? It's just because the hashes are wider. right? Yes. They're wider than the pros. They're not as wide as they used to be. They used to be really wide. Look up a game on YouTube from the 1970s 
and some of the formations, some of the some of the offensive plays are run. They look like they're pinned up against the sideline. Well, Mark, uh, I thank you very much for taking my call, and you have a great rest of your week. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Two things come to mind when he brings up uh, just kind of oddities like that with the hashes being wide. And then, you know, look up a Texas-Oklahoma game where basically the, the some of their offensive plays are run almost up against the sideline, it appears. That the hash, that was a huge factor in the games back then. And just aligning your defense or only having to play generally half the field. Now, I'm exaggerating to a certain extent, but the hash marks were much wider. Uh, two things that, uh, not that I came across that I didn't know, but they refreshed my memory recently, is that uh, there was a NFL championship game back in the 40s. I don't remember exactly what year maybe 1945 in which the final score was 15 to 14. Sammy Baugh threw a pass from his own end zone. And back then the goalpost was on the goal line up until 1974. The goalpost was on the goal line. Is that ludicrous? The goalpost was on the goal line. Can you imagine playing goal line defense? You're a middle linebacker and the, the offense has the ball on like the three yard line coming in for a touchdown. And you know, trying to like be standing next to a goalpost and having to run around the go- the goalpost was on the goal line. Watch the 1974 Super Bowl. Uh, Larry Zonka, Miami Dolphins, Minnesota Vikings. You see him score a touchdown. He's basically like hitting the goalpost um, as he's running into the end zone. Anyway, Sammy Baugh is throwing a pass from his own end zone and hits the goalpost. Do you know what the ruling on was? On that was it should have been a do over or at least an incomplete pass, a safety against his team for hitting the goalpost with a throw. That decided the NFL championship game. Um, Then the other oddity was in the 1973 Super Bowl, this was the Dolphins' perfect season playing the Redskins. Billy Kilmer, uh, starting quarterback for the Redskins, uh, had an open receiver running in the back of the end zone across the end line at the back of the end zone. But the goalpost, of course, was in front of the field and he hit the goalpost. That was just an incomplete pass. They changed the rule, but they didn't, they, they thought to change the rule, but they didn't think to change where the goalpost was placed. Love that stuff. All right. Michael, give uh, George Maddock the Mark Rogers greeting and make better. You know what's uh, really messed me up, Michael, has been this uh, this Mike Crane over here. It I used to be able to come through with a huge windup. I had that huge windup back then. Now I got to kind of like, mm, welcome. Yeah. Oh, man, I am way behind. Okay, Dalton's telling us that the uh, three are on the hot seat from the Big Ten, but James Franklin, is he on the hot seat? Recruiting has been down, true, among other stuff in the football program. Yes, they're coming off a bad season, but they did rally to go four and five. Oh, love it, Matthew. Love it. Any Husker fans in here interested in doing a pool to help fund, sponsor a show this fall for the Nebraska channel? Speaking my language there, Matthew. Thank you so much for that. Uh, And you can certainly write me. 
Let me know what you have in mind. Maybe I can help you organize something. Mark Rogers TV at Gmail. I'm always available, always accessible at Mark Rogers TV at Gmail. All right. I've got a lot of catching up to do. Falcony RX loves the cyclones. There we go with uh, from the Hawkeye of the Storm. This is uh, Corey on the line. I wonder if Corey was on the line when I was making comments about Iowa football coverage. I mentioned to you tonight, Corey. Now, this was uh, 1235. This was forever ago. What time is it now? I'm always way behind on these comments. That was, oh, Lord. That was over an hour ago. Okay, we're going to start whipping through these comments here. Kyle asking me what I consider to be the greatest college football game. Oh, my word. Well, the historians will tell you the 71 Nebraska-Oklahoma game. I'm going to tell you that I can only rate what I've seen, which would be... I will say this, that when people are asked that question, they typically think of the finish of the game, like the kick six game. Now, that was a really good game. I don't know if it was a great, great game. It was a great finish. It was a ridiculous finish, but I'd have to go back and watch the game to see, was this really a great game? Of course, it was a really good game. It was close. Wow, the greatest college football game of all time. So again, the other aspect of that is the importance of the game. Do you consider the importance to be part of it? Or you know, you can flip on a game and say, uh, Iowa State and Kansas State played last week, and that was the greatest game I've seen this year. It was just entertaining. Didn't mean much. They were both six and four, but it was a great game. It was phenomenal. It was just crazy good, but it didn't mean much. Or do you factor in the importance of the game? Typically. Historically, we factor in the importance of the game. Otherwise, we see great games every week. Miami, Nebraska, the Orange Bowl in 1984. I mentioned kick six. Actually, the week before the Auburn-Georgia game or two weeks before, that was a crazy finish and really good game. Great games. We can go right to the national championship games. I would rank the Ohio State-Miami game in 02, Texas-USC in 05. Even though it was close, I didn't think that the Auburn-Oregon game was that great of a game. It was a poorly played game early on offensively for a long time in, in that game. I thought the Auburn-Florida State 2013 championship game was a great game. Uh, great comebacks are fun to watch if you've, unless your team's the team being victimized. A great comeback's fun to watch. I would have said Ohio State-Alabama in 14, but it wasn't quite close enough. Ohio State generally had that game in hand. Uh, put that awful garnet and gold helmet away. All right, Falcon ERX, it's been up there long enough. Jack. Yeah. You only had to wait an hour for that. Uh, yeah, Texas and USC. Oh, Kyle came back. All right going to honor that Kyle. Thank you so much for that. All right. A&M has a favorable schedule as much as you can have a favorable schedule in that division. Uh, we talked about that Dalton about uh, the Jimbo comment. All right. All right. All right. What else do we have here?
Great games of all time. Who else am I thinking of there? Yakov22, thank you so much for that. I appreciate uh, the super chat. Rutgers, better coaching culture than Michigan. Uh, yes. Yes and yes. Just if you weigh in the expectations versus what was accomplished at Rutgers last year, what was accomplished at Rutgers in going three and six is substantial. They had lost 21 consecutive Big Ten games in almost all. All of those games were embarrassments, were utter embarrassments. Some of their games, Rutgers, were laughable. Like, of course, the the ultimate example was that 76 nothing game against Michigan. If you're a nerd to look at box scores, look up that game, look at the box score. Rutgers had a game against Iowa. They lost, I think, 37 to nothing. They had negative yards passing. They have been inept and were inept in Big Ten play, and that carried over to losing group of five games outside of the conference to where Greg Schiano instantly made them respectable, where they played capable football. They beat Michigan State. They beat who on a last-second field goal? Was that Illinois or Purdue? And then had the other win against whomever it was. They won three games. Might have been Purdue, Illinois, and Michigan State. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I say Rutgers is, from a psychological standpoint, in much better shape than Michigan. The Florida-Florida State game in 99. Good call there. There was also a great Florida-Florida State game in 97, like a 32-29 game. Uh, Although it ended in a tie in that series, the 94 game, one of them was up 31-3, the other one came back to tie. There it is. Thank you so much. All right. Talk is pit wants to get me a pit helmet. You can send that my way. Just, just, uh, hit me up at Mark Rogers TV at Gmail. All right. Uh, Yakov 22. Thank you so much for that. Well, what do we have here? Whoa, 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 Love the show. Best show on YouTube. Keep up the great work. Well, of course, I've got my namesake with dyslexia there. Is that what that is? Did, did somebody go out and make a YouTube, a, a Google account just to spoof me there? Appreciate that. Whatever the motivation. Penn State fan 24 may have to call. Yes. Q Lee, can we get somebody else to win besides Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State? For those of us who would like to see change, would like to see something different, how about how about this playoff? It would be nice just to get, get somebody different in there besides Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Georgia. So what if it was something like... Uh, at least to unseat one of them. Texas A&M makes it. North Carolina makes it. Wisconsin or Iowa make it. Iowa State makes it. Somebody, Oregon makes it. USC makes it. Somebody like that. But how about if it was multiple? What about this for a playoff? Texas A&M, North Carolina, Iowa State, Oregon. How's that for a playoff? Texas A&M, North Carolina, Iowa State, Indiana for a playoff. There you go. Thank you, LW.
Matthew, you know that I've been called out a number of times for being too kind to the callers and just letting them talk on and on and on. We probably should move them along. And you talk about Feinbaum. Somebody brought up Feinbaum tonight. You listen to Paul Feinbaum. First of all, he doesn't he doesn't really answer anybody's questions. Like if you call in and say, what kind of chance do you think uh, Texas A&M has against uh, Alabama and the rest of the SEC West this year? He'll say, um, yeah, Jimbo's doing a nice job. He's really building that program. They're recruiting out of their minds. Uh, they got a shot. Click. He's on to the next one. All right, look at LW chiming in here. Subscribe to all the channels. Was number 900 on Oregon. Ha! Do you think the idea of a specific team channel or doing five Power Five conference channels would be better? Uh, I certainly thought about that, but I think I think team-specific channels. I really do. The Oklahoma one's doing well. The Florida State one's doing well. Those who, in particular, the Ohio State one's doing pretty well. Michigan's doing pretty well. I just think if I did, if I had a Big Ten channel, I just I don't think there's enough connection. You guys are big college football fans, so you have a connection and a care for the rest of the conference. Most people don't. Not enough to take in digital content to listen to. Who, if you if you're a uh, uh, a Florida fan to know that Tennessee just signed a four star. I I don't think that's the case. We've got uh, Tom Nash chiming in here. Tom, good to see you. And I will say this. Welcome to the voice of college football. Love to see you here, Tom. Would like to know who you root for and how long you've been watching. And probably at this point have not been watching. Well, caught up to 143. I'm just about, yeah, it's 206. Mark, you can let people put the stream inside of dialing in using the share link in the StreamYard studio you are using. Huh? You can let people join the stream instead of dialing in using the share link in this. Yes, I understand that if people want to jump on here and show their face, that's not typically the way it's done. We could try that. I got you, Tom. Talk is pit. David, look, if you want to talk, on the call in line and cannot donate, then you probably need to stand down. This show costs money. Uh, yes, it does, David. Thank you so much for uh, your support. It's always appreciated. 30,000 subs. Yeah, let's get to 30,000. Uh, I thought I was going to blow past 25 to 30 and so forth the way we were going there for a while, but uh, it's been a, it's been a grind. Uh, we've got a spread prediction on Bama, Miami at 13 and a half. Look at Tom here. Tom, I have never seen your, your uh, avatar or your name before, but I appreciate you being here. Good to see you. We do a lot of Michigan talk. You know that. Uh, Ray says, uh, the line on Miami, Alabama is 18, according to 247 Sports. Pizza Woman. Pizza Woman. This is the first time I've seen Pizza Woman, and I would give Pizza Woman a huge and hearty hello, but I don't believe she's still here. And we would ask for possibly some delivery. Man, that actually sounds good. I might get off here, even though my alarm's set for 8 a.m. and throw a pizza in. I might do that. 
even though I already made myself some dinner earlier tonight and it was, it was quite good. So like a, uh, some type of, uh, pork chop. Yeah. We had quite the, uh, back and forth about how long phone call should be. Uh, we've got somebody else on the line that I've never seen before. Maybe I'll do more of these midnight. I don't even know how many people we've got on the line at two o'clock in the morning. 40 some. All right. We've got, uh, yeah, as long as you continue the, uh, 10 minute war with Steve Dace, I'll be fine. I enjoy several here, but, uh, zero minute war, 10 minute war was my fave. Uh, yeah. So Steve and I will get together on Thursday. We are going to discuss his team talent rankings here on Thursday. And I don't know about tomorrow uh, because we typically get together on Tuesdays, but I believe he's uh, tied up. Wholesome one. Look at the wholesome ones here. And again, I know I'm a half hour late on these, just catching up with some of these comments. So uh, I don't know if the wholesome one's still here. Wholesome one, we're good. Thanks to you. Your contribution, well, we're good. We just need to do much better, much better. I would like to be doing this a year from now. Um, our site, so the voice of college football.com. Forget the the at the beginning, it's voice of college football.com. Check it out. I am telling you right now, you're not going to see anything else there but links to videos. We've set it up very nicely. I, I like the site. I'm not going to boast my, beat my chest or anything that it's just the most amazing thing in the world because I really didn't have a whole lot to do with it. I, I um, just allowed others to build it out. And the web designer did a fantastic job and it looks great and it sets the stage for us to do some big things there. So glad I thought of that. Voiceofcollegefootball.com. Please register. Go to the top free registration there. And you can get a free mask or do whatever you want, 20% off your first purchase. Regardless whether you want any of that, register for free up at the top there. Please do that for me at voiceofcollegefootball.com because we're going to bring a lot of, I, I don't want to mention anything in particular because then I, I will have to deliver on that. But in addition to just, that just links back to the channels and so forth for right now because we just built it. But we're going to have a lot of great things there. Uh, no Amazon link shown tonight. Where's my Venmo link? I just asked somebody, Kurt, to that the other day. I said, uh, I saw somebody, a YouTube person with, uh, uh, they're a music uh, reactor and they had a display with their Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App. And I said, how do you do this? And they did it through OBS. And I don't have that, but, uh, I'm at Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App. You just search Mark Rogers TV at Mark Rogers TV, Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. With with Cash App, of course, it's dollar sign Mark Rogers TV. Oh, did we have a bad call here? Something, something. Falcon ERX. I think I've uh, made it all the way back to. <laughs> Ray seven, three, three, seven. Oh man. Should I even take off on this? So I, I did a show with, uh, an attractive, uh, young lady. This was maybe five or six years ago. We did it for about seven or eight months and it was, it was fun. Uh, also I've had two significant others in particular that I thought, should I bring them on and neither one of them know anything about college football. Just bring them on and just have them like read viewer comments and I'll respond. David, pounding the pavement here. Seven minute rule being suggested by Cole. 
like to know when Cole showed up. Cole's been here during these live chats consistently recently. Ray, Miami coverage killed Mark's show. Three minutes max. Maybe I need to do that. Oh, look at this. Alabama football fan roll tide. Uh, we're going to post a conversation we had with Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama. So if you see more conversations just in the next couple of days, think, well, didn't Mark say that he was taking these down? I've got a couple more to post. Going to do, well, we did Michigan today. I got an Alabama and a UCLA one. I think those are going to be the final two. So there's going to be a couple more conversations that we're going to post here. And then no more, none, unless it's a big topic. <laughs> I should just do a Kansas live stream just to do it. You know, I may do that. Uh, uh, Cole, I think that's a tremendous suggestion. Even though I've said it many times that I will do a Kansas live stream. I will do a Kansas live show every week. If it was supported, I would do it. But I may do just one just to see what the reaction is. And I mean, I will do it. I will do a legitimate Kansas live and I will probably have to learn about the Kansas football team while we're on the air. I will be reading stats and looking through depth charts and I will analyze Kansas football as best I can because the last time I watched Kansas play a football game was, 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 was 2007. Maybe when would there be an opportunity to watch Kansas play when there's not a much better game on or 12 other better games on. So there's never a time to watch Kansas football. Falcon ERX Venmo. Venmo. PayPal. Cash app. The gridiron expert. So I met the gridiron expert. And I don't know if I'm a allowed to reveal his do people know his real name i won't say it because maybe he doesn't like that out i don't know uh i advertised this was probably five years ago advertised for interns on twitter and i was shocked that i advertised for interns and within 10 minutes i had three and two turned out to be legit very good people and he was one of them and so he interned here at the Voice of College Football. And uh, once he took off, he, he was so nice that even once his channel took off with a lot of good stuff that he's doing, he still wanted to do um, some, some work for me and internship work. And I said, go, go, do your thing. Go after it. Uh, I don't know if the slowdown, obviously football season does much better than, um, non-football season in the off season, of course. But I think that I'm even taking a huge hit compared to last year at this time. I just thought if I go full time with this, like I I'm doing worse, <laughs> I'm doing worse devoting all my time to this than I was doing when I had a full-time job at ESPN for 50 hours a week. And then I was doing this on the side and busting my tail uh, when I wasn't on ESPN. So that's not good. Thank you, Kurt. Appreciate that. Venmo, just look up uh, Mark Rogers TV. We go to Venmo right now. But you're right, Kurt. I need to do a better job. I post those banners most of the time, but I'm just going through your comments tonight. But uh, I post those banners all the time with uh, with Venmo. Yes, it's at Mark Rogers TV. And you got uh, some tremendous selfie of me. I don't know where that uh, was taken. But anyway, it looks like a selfie. All right, all right, all right. You know, I don't want to go to bed, and I actually feel like eating pizza. We 
We've got an Oregon, or I'm sorry, Purdue uh, quarterback discussion. Good stuff right there. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else here? <laughs> Ray says the whole world is collapsing. Not just your show. Well, I, I, I need my show not to collapse. Do I really need to go out and get a real job? Seriously? Falcon ERX, you are off the hook. Go to bed. Appreciate it. Jeremiah here. Yeah. Uh, talk is pit. I'm glad that you put the LMAO at the end of that statement. Here we go, Samuel. We've got a Nebraska channel. Voice of College Football in Nebraska. You should be able to find it. Just uh, search Mark Rogers TV or search Voice of College Football in Nebraska. We'll get you there for sure. Voice of College Football in Nebraska. Just lock it in there. We'll have our show coming up tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, I will not be watching any boxing. It's been forever since I watched boxing. It does not interest me anymore. Steely from USC would be a great co-host. Are we talking about um, Keely Yor? Are you talking about Keely Yor, Ray? She's been on here a few times. Uh, her boss... Uh, Ryan Abraham, who runs uscfootball.com, was just on here. He was just on here uh, a few weeks ago. He's a great guy. But they're too busy. Too busy. Oh, wait. Somebody calling in. I'm sorry. My, my monitor keeps falling asleep here. And now I... Got to turn it back on because it's completely falling asleep. So it sounds like Falcon ERX was calling in. Did I miss the call? Yeah, this monitor goes to sleep way, way too often. Hey, welcome to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Who's on the line? This is Falconer. Okay. Or Falconer. So, How so if I, have, I, don't care. I, I have screwed that up all that all this time. It's Falconer X. Uh, well, I can't change it. It's the Google thing, and I'm not technically savvy. Be there. I'm here. You're cutting out a little bit. Okay. I'm sorry. Is that better? I hope so. I, I think we've got you. Better? Yeah, I think okay. you're good. No, it, it's it's fine. Okay. That's fine. I don't it, – it's a Google thing I did. I can't change it, and I'd like to change it, but I can't. So I'm not technically savvy. But I watch your channel because you probably have the best analysis of every college team off the top of your head that I've ever seen. And just it's like a savant. Well, I appreciate that. I, I've had a good memory through the years. As you know, I you know, as you know, we we don't support the same teams. You know, I've I've got my guys at the Hurricanes. But I love I love the I love I watch the FSU shows, I watch the boys the Ohio State shows, I watch the Miami shows. I have to say, I still think uh, between Cam and the Wholesome One, they have the best charisma. I think their shows are the best, but I'm biased. 
Hey, Falcon ERX, I think we lost you. You there? No. Nope. Okay. I, I think I'm still here. There you are. Yeah. There you are. Uh, okay. After you said something about, yeah. after you said Cam and the Wholesome One have really good shows, we didn't hear anything after that. Well, I, I, just, I just think they have the most charisma. They're just, those shows are the most fun to watch. But I do watch the Florida State shows, and I do watch the Ohio State show, and some of the Midwest stuff, because I do go to Iowa in the summer, the summer house in Iowa. So I kind of like Iowa State more than Iowa, just because I like the underdog. Um, but I just, I just don't get down. I think, I think, I think what you're seeing right now is you're coming out of a COVID year, and you're in the doldrums of summer non-college football right now. So I think this is going to take off. I mean, you know, I'll give you. I don't know what the super sticker is. You probably make two cents off every one of those three dollars I send you, but um, I, we're, there's a lot of people out there supporting you, and and like I said we're pimping you pretty hard. Well, I appreciate that, and I, I see you in all these live chats, and and, and you contribute all the time, and. Uh, how do I how do I put this? Of course, I will always uh, appreciate and I don't want to say need want want uh, people to contribute individually, but it, it would be tremendous to get to the point uh, where the channel's popular enough, and I also have built out other revenue streams through the Amazon links, other affiliate marketing, uh, and sponsorships where where I, to be honest, wouldn't care if anybody gave anything. That's where I would like to be, where I wouldn't be on here ever asking or, uh, and it would be great as, as tip money if people, people gave, but where I wouldn't be dependent on it. That's where I should I be. Yeah, that's where, you know, I, I've got a, I've got some people I know in out of Orlando that do a podcast, a small podcast, not sport related, but they do some sports. Um, but I think that's where you need, you need to connect with the podcast guys. I don't think YouTube is necessarily friendly to everyone with their algorithms. I don't, I don't know that they love everything, but I, mean, I tell you what, we love what you do and the guys that love it are always here. They're, they're, the, they're, the, they're the solid crew show up, you know, for all the shows. So I just, you know, I just felt like you were getting a little down tonight and I just, that's why I called it. Well, I, I do appreciate that. Uh, it, it's not going to do any of us any good if I get on here and I, I look or sound like I'm down. Uh, I, I'm concerned. I'll be very authentic and honest about that. But uh, yeah, that, that doesn't help anyone because people aren't going to tune into that. Uh, we need to be excited about what we're doing here and, and hopeful and so forth and so on. And it's not in any... Uh, I just had to make some changes, I believe to unclutter the channel and make it very clear what we're delivering here. And I think you can understand that, um, unfortunately not every fan base, uh, has a large contingent watching this channel. So I'm picking on Iowa tonight because it's the first one that comes to mind. I would love to talk about Iowa football a lot. Uh, we've got a great Iowa guest that comes on, but people don't watch the videos. So it's, I wrestle between do am I wasting time because this isn't paying off or do I slug it out and hope that the Iowa fan base finds us? So I think you build a network. I think you gotta build I think you're building a network. It's it is gonna suck for a little while. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And and I can't cover all these and, and one of the reasons why I want to focus most of the team centric topics and videos to just those team channels is I, I can't fill up this channel with just a hundred different teams because YouTube doesn't, they just don't really pay that off. It's it's if I have a Georgia fan, if I let's say cut a Georgia video and it brings in, a dozen Georgia fans because they liked that video and they subscribe to the channel, but they don't see a Georgia video for a month. Well, then they lose interest. I think I lose a lot of subscribers that way. Well, I, I'm a fifty year old man. I'm an old guy that, that went to Miami in the heyday, but I will tell you that um, Twitch has some 
there's a major deal on Twitch. There's different funding mechanisms. I mean, I, I support what you're doing. I, I just love your um, analysis of college football. Even, even when it goes against my team, like, I think you have it right 90% of the time. Um, other than the fact that you guys stole that one championship from us, but other, but we'll agree to disagree on that. Um, but I, I just think I just think you have a you have a uh, an independent perspective, and uh, uh, your analysis is based on statistics. It, it's it's very factual. It's not you didn't go against Ohio State when you had it. Well, you weren't with me watching at the time, but uh, I always bring this back when I, I get it, what what I find funny sometimes, and this happened uh, recently, is some Ohio State fans on Twitter were calling me an Ohio State hater because they didn't realize I'm an Ohio State fan. And so I, I take that as a compliment. But um, I cite this as an example when I get called a homer. And it's I'm going to claim it's impossible to take all bias out of anyone. I do my best to stay neutral and cut it straight, but am I biased? Of course, I'm flesh and blood. So if, for as much as I try to push against it, it's going to come out at some point. But um, that 2016 season, which Ohio State was given a playoff spot despite not winning the Big Ten, I was here ranting and raving for a week that Penn State got ripped off and Ohio State should not have been in the playoff. Uh, so that's, that's my best example of me staying true to the, the big straightforward analysis, looking at, the, looking at the stats. And I will say this: I got the opportunity to see a game. I, I, when I was at my 40th birthday, I was invited to Columbus to go to the horseshoe to watch Miami play Ohio state and in a skybox, which is, Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And my Miami started that game out. I think we started out with a kickoff return for a touchdown and then fell apart. Typical Miami style. Um, but my name was put on the scoreboard as my 40th birthday. And mm-hmm. I couldn't have had a better experience in, at Ohio State in, in the, in the, in the, I don't know what we call it. Anyway. In the stadium, the horseshoe. Yep, the horseshoe. The horseshoe. In the horseshoe, wearing my Miami gear in a skybox, and everyone there was complete gentlemen. You know, sportsmanship. It, it, we lost, so you know, made it made it easier for them. But uh, it, it, it's it's a memory that I will hold for a long time. That's awesome. And that's what it's all about. Uh, I say an oxymoron all the time, but I hope people get my intent when I say it. I say, I want you to be able to trash talk in the live chat, but do it respectfully, which doesn't make sense. Of course, trash talk isn't meant to be respectful, but I hope people get what I mean, that I want people to be able to take jabs at each other's teams, but let's not make it personal. Let's not make it mean. Or anything like that. My best friends would that as you or you have. I don't hate them. I think they're school. I think their teams are terrible. But <laughs> we'll still we still go to dinner on Saturday night, you know. All right, sir. Well, it, it is a, a bit difficult to hear you for some reason. I don't, I don't necessarily think it's your phone. I, I don't know. It's been the last two calls, but uh, I appreciate you so much calling in because uh, you, you've been a great support for a long time, and I'm glad that uh, you, you decided to call. Well, it's not because of any other reason I can't change it. Okay. All right. All right. Have a good night. We appreciate you calling. I'm going to bed. Bye-bye. All right, all right, all right. So I think we accomplished what we set out to do, and that was basically to inform everyone here uh, the direction of the channel going forward. 
most of you probably wouldn't even have noticed, <laughs> but uh, that's fine. Uh, so basically, we're going to keep it clear and direct to call in shows here at the main channel with analysis, meaning analytics, pretty hardcore, just numbers crunching kind of videos, hopefully every day. So keep in mind, I'm trying to populate videos on 22 other channels. So to, to put together an analysis of, of that that's uh, takes some time to put together, I may not be able to deliver that video every day here, but that's going to be my attempt. Call-in shows, breaking news, and analytics here. Like national perspective here, and then all the team-specific channels that we have which include USC and Oregon, Oklahoma, Texas, the SEC, Alabama, Texas A&M, Auburn, LSU, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Notre Dame, Clemson, Miami, Florida State, Ohio State, Michigan, Nebraska, Penn State. I think I got them all. All right, right here at the Voice of College Football. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the support. I had a whole lot of fun tonight talking college football with all of you. Until what two thirty in the morning, and uh, so man, I I may have to factor this into the schedule. We may need a late night once a week, so we'll look into that. Eight o'clock tomorrow night with Nebraska Live. That's eight Eastern, seven Central. Nebraska Live on the Nebraska Channel. You guys are the best. We'll see you soon.